Will you please welcome to the stage Azilawati Bunchit. Thank you, Derrida. Judges, um, before, before I proceed, I'd like to acknowledge and thank my family, my supervisors, Associate Professor Strutlaw, Dr. Daniel Choi, the Malaysian government, and my fellow friends. Bullies exist on the playground and at the workplace. Victims in New Zealand can go to Kiakaha for children and wait for employees. Workplace again, violence in employment. But there's one type of bullying that's far more detrimental because it affects the individual, company values, and the nation's economy. It is known as a corporate bully. The victims are the small shareholders and the society. Corporate bullies happen when shareholders of a public company have so much power and control that they can do whatever they want with the company. For example, Takshin Shinawat, the ex-Prime Minister of Thailand, but less known as the controlling shareholder of Shincorp, a giant telecommunication company there. In 2006, he and his family sold all of their 50% stake in Shincorp to a Singaporean company. This is like selling Fonterra to a company in China. Now, as Kiwis, you do not want your nation's strategic asset to be owned by a foreigner, do you? No, but Thakshin did, and this caused massive rise from the public and made him step down as the Prime Minister. Now, Thakshin is just one example of a corporate bully. I'm sure there are many more bullies on the playground, and this is where my research seeks to contribute to my field in three main areas. Firstly, I search for corporate bullies on a big playground called East Asia. Public listed companies, they are unique. When more than 66% are controlled by one shareholder, and more than 50% are controlled by family members. Now, these conditions and lack of regulatory control can be convenient for them to bully. To find them, I analyzed 10 years of all the mergers and takeover deals in the region. Secondly, I measured the negative impact that I found so far to the company's values that become the cholesterol that clawed the economic development of the countries. And finally, with these findings, I forward my suggestions to the regulators who have the authority to combat potential corporate bullies. Together, it is hoped that a bully-free zone can be achieved to maximize company performances for the benefit of all. Ladies and gentlemen, corporate bullies must be controlled, if not stopped, before another victim is abused by these greedy shareholders, before another piece of our nation's asset is sold company by company to foreigners, and before we know it, our, our country is conquered, not by wars and by guns for which we die fighting for, but by some bullies and the moments of meager profit. By then, the only thing we can do is ask them, was it worth it? Someone call a taxi, take her to the airport and send her to Wellington immediately to go and sort out Warner Brothers, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs>